Hi everyone, it's Professor Pemberton. In this video, we're going to talk about systems of nonlinear equations. So in this video, we're going to talk about how to solve systems of equations in which the equations are not all linear equations. And the methods for solving systems of linear equations in two variables can also be used to solve systems of nonlinear equations. So in this video, we're going to talk about how to solve a system of nonlinear equations using the substitution method, how to solve a system of linear equations using elimination method, and then how to solve a system of nonlinear equations using the graphical method. So let's begin by talking about the substitution and elimination methods. So a system of nonlinear equations is a system of two or more equations where you have two or more variables that contain at least one equation that's not linear. In other words, you have an equation that does not have all the variables raised to the first power. So recall that a linear equation can take the form a times x plus b times y plus c is equal to zero. So this is what's called a linear equation in two variables. You have two variables x and y and the a, b, and c are just coefficients or real numbers. Any equation that cannot be written in this form is a nonlinear equation. The substitution method that was used to solve linear systems of equations is actually the same method that we're going to use for solving nonlinear systems of equations. We're going to take one of the equations, solve for one of the variables, and then substitute the result into the other equation or the second equation and solve for the remaining variable. There is, however, a variation in the possible outcomes when using the substitution method. The steps to solve a system of nonlinear equations, we're going to use the substitution method as follows. Step one, you solve the linear equation for one of the variables. Step two, you substitute the expression obtained in step one into the parabola equation. Step three, you back substitute the value obtained for one of the variables into either of the given equations, the original equations, and then solve for the remaining variable. And then step four, you can always check your answer by actually substituting in the values for the variables and making sure that you actually have true statements for each of the equations. So let's try example one. The substitution method, find all the solutions of the nonlinear systems of equations. Number one, we have a system of equations. One equation is x squared plus y squared equals 100, and the other equation is 3 times x subtract y equals 10. Notice that 3x subtract y equals 10, that's a linear equation. However, x squared plus y squared equals 100, that's a nonlinear equation because x and y are both raised to powers that are not equal to 1. So we're going to use the substitution method to actually solve this system of nonlinear equations. So we're going to take the linear equation, 3x subtract y equals 10. Let's solve for one of the variables. Well, the easiest variable to solve for is the variable y, so let's get y by itself. So we'll add y to the right side of the equation and also subtract 10 to the left side of the equation and we'll get y equals 3 times x subtract 10. And now take this equation, y equals 3x minus 10, this resulting equation, and substitute into the nonlinear equation, x squared plus y squared equals 100, for the variable y. Now whenever you substitute into the other equation for the variable y, make sure that whatever you're plugging in goes in parentheses. So you have x squared plus y squared equals 100. Well, the x squared is going to stay the same, but then we're going to replace y with 3x subtract 10 in parentheses. So it'll be 3x minus 10, in parentheses, all squared equals 100. And so now we just need to simplify because we only have one variable remaining, just the x variable. We're going to try to get x by itself on one side of the equation. So we need to simplify first. We have x squared, and then if you take 3x minus 10, all squared, that's 3x minus 10 times itself. So 3x minus 10 times 3x minus 10. We're going to have to use the FOIL method to multiply this binomial times binomial. And the right side of the equation will just be 100. So you have x squared for the first term. 3x times 3x will give you 9x squared. 3x times negative 10 will give you negative 30x. Negative 10 times 3x will also give you negative 30x. And then negative 10 times negative 10 will give you positive 100. And the right side of the equation is still 100. Well, now we have a nonlinear equation that we need to solve for x. So make sure that all the terms are on one side of the equation. You have x squared plus 9x squared. That will give you 10x squared. The middle two terms, the negative 30x and minus 30x, will give you negative 60x after you combine like terms. And then 100 subtract 100 will give you 0. So the equation will be 10x squared subtract 60x equals 0. And so this is a quadratic equation. Let's try factoring the left-hand side of the equation so we can find out what are the x values that will make the left side of the equation equal to 0. So you have 10x squared subtract 60x equals 0. Notice that both terms have a 10 times x in common, so you can factor a 10x out from both terms. If you factor out 10x as the greatest common factor, you'll have an x left from the first term, and you also have a minus 6 from the second term after you factor out 10x from 60x. And the right-hand side of the equation is still 0. So 10 times x times the quantity x subtract 6 is equal to 0. That means 10 times x is equal to 0, or the other factor, x minus 6, is equal to 0. And so if you solve these equations for x, you have x equals 0, or x equals positive 6. 
Well, now we have the values for the x variable. Now we need to find out what are the corresponding y coordinates. So if x equals 0, you can actually plug in the x value into the equation we already have solved for y. The linear equation was y equals 3x minus 10. If x is equal to 0, then you will have y is equal to 3 times 0, subtract 10. That will give you y equals negative 10. So whenever x equals 0, the y value must be negative 10. And for the same reason, if x equals 6, you can plug x equals 6 into this equation for the x value because you already have the y value solved for. So y is equal to 3 times x minus 10, that will be y equals 3 times 6, subtract 10. That will give you 18 subtract 10, which is equal to 8. So whenever x equals 6, the y value must be 8. And so you actually have, and so what we actually have found is two intersection points between the graphs of these two different equations. You have 3x minus y equals 10, that's a linear equation, so the graph will be a straight line. So 3x minus y equals 10, that's a linear equation, so the graph is a line. The line was y equals 3x minus 10, the slope is 3, and the y-intercept is negative 10, and then x squared plus y squared equals 100, that actually is an equation of a circle. You have a circle that's centered at the origin, 0 comma 0, and the radius is 10, because the right side of the equation is 10 squared, or 100. And so the intersection point between the line, y equals 3x minus 10, and the circle, x squared plus y squared equals 100, are the points 0 comma negative 10, because x equals 0, y was negative 10, and also the point 6 comma 8, because x was 6, the y value was 8. Let's try another problem. Number two, let's solve this system of nonlinear equations. x subtract y equals negative 1 and y equals x squared plus 1. We're going to solve this system of nonlinear equations using the substitution method again. The first step in solving a system of nonlinear equations using the substitution method is you take the linear equation, x minus y equals negative 1, and you solve for one of the variables. So if you have x minus y equals negative 1, let's solve for the variable x. So add y to the right side of the equation. So you have x is equal to negative 1 plus y. So x is equal to y subtract 1. So now you take this equation, this resultant equation for the linear equation, and now you substitute into the nonlinear equation, y equals x squared plus 1. So we're going to replace the x variable with y subtract 1 in parentheses. So now substitute x equals y minus 1 into the nonlinear equation. You have y equals x squared plus 1 for the nonlinear equation. That means you have y equals x will now be replaced with y minus 1 in parentheses. So y minus 1 in parentheses, all squared, and then plus 1. So now notice you only have one variable remaining. You only have the variable y. So now we can try to solve for the variable y. So you have y on one side of the equation, y subtract 1 all squared is y minus 1 times y minus 1, and then you have plus 1 outside the parentheses. So you have y on the left hand side of the equation. On the right hand side, y minus 1 times y minus 1, you can use the FOIL method because you need to take the binomial times binomial. So you have y times y, that will give you y squared. The outside terms, y times the negative 1 will give you negative y. The inside two terms, negative 1 times y will give you negative y. And then the last two terms, negative 1 times negative 1 will give you positive 1. And then you also have plus 1 outside the parentheses. So on the right hand side of the equation, you have y squared, subtract 2y plus 2, and the left hand side of the equation was just y. So you have y squared subtract 2y plus 2 is equal to y. So this is a nonlinear equation and we want to solve for the variable y. We want to get all the terms on one side of the equation first. So you have y squared subtract. So if you subtract y to the left hand side of the equation, you have y squared subtract 2y subtract another y will give you negative 3y and then plus 2 and the right hand side of the equation will now be 0. So y squared subtract 3y plus 2 equals 0. We can factor by finding two numbers that multiply to 2 and the same two numbers need to add to negative 3, the middle coefficient. Negative 2 times negative 1 will give you positive 2 and negative negative 2 plus negative 1 will give you negative 3, which is the middle coefficient. So y squared subtract 3y plus 2 equals 0 will factor as the quantity y minus 2 times the other factor y subtract 1 is equal to 0. Well now you have a product on the left hand side of the equation. The product is equal to 0 if at least one of the factors is equal to 0. So that means y minus 2 is equal to 0 or the other factor y subtract 1 is equal to 0. Now you solve these resultant equations y is equal to 2 or y is equal to 1. Well, we're not finished yet. We have the y coordinates for the intersection points, but we also need the x coordinates for the intersection points. So now we have y equals 2 and y equals 1. Well, notice we have this x equals y minus 1. That was a linear equation, and we already have the x variable solved for. And now we can just substitute the value y equals 2 and y equals 1 into that equation for the y variable so we can find out what is the corresponding x coordinate for the intersection point. So if the y is equal to 1, x will be 1 subtract 1, which is equal to 0. So if y equals 1, x is 0. And if the y value is 2, 2, you'll have x is equal to 2 subtract 1, which will give you 1. So if y equals 2, the x coordinate must be 1. So the intersection points will be x equals 0, y is 1, so that's the point 0 comma 1, and if x equals 1, the y was 2. So that's the intersection point 1 comma 2. So you have a line, x equals y minus 1, and you have the parabola, y equals x squared plus 1. The parabola and the line will intersect at two different points, 0 comma 1, and also 1 comma 2. So these are the solutions to the system of nonlinear equations.
So in the last two examples, we've seen that substitutions is often the preferred method when you solve systems of equations that includes a linear equation and also a nonlinear equation. However, when both equations in the system of nonlinear equations include variables of the second degree, solving them using elimination by addition is often an easier method to use than substitution method. So generally, the elimination method is a far simpler method when you solve a system of equations where you have two equations with two variables because you actually have fewer steps to perform. So as an example, we're going to investigate the possible types of solutions when solving a system of nonlinear equations using the elimination method. So the steps to solve a system of nonlinear equations using the elimination method are as follows. So step one, if necessary, rewrite both equations where the variable terms are on the same side of the equation and any constant terms are on the opposite side of the equation. You're allowed to multiply either equation in the system of nonlinear equations or possibly even both equations by appropriate non-zero numbers so that the sum of the coefficients of like terms in the two equations will give you zero. Step three, you add the resulting equations from the previous step after you have the multiplications performed. The sum of the equation will contain just one variable. Step four, you solve the resulting equation for that remaining variable. Step five, you back substitute the value obtained from one of the variables into either of the given equations or the original equations and you solve for the remaining variable. And then step six, you can always check your answers by actually making sure that when you replace the variables, with your solutions, you actually have true statements for both equations. So in example two, we're going to use the elimination method. Find all the solutions of the nonlinear system of equations. So number one, we have a system of nonlinear equations, 3x squared plus 2y equals 26, and also the equation 5x squared plus 7y equals 3. Notice that we could use the substitution method by solving each of the equations for y. However, both of the equations are nonlinear equations, so the elimination method actually is a preferred method. So let's take the equations, 3x squared plus 2y equals 26 and 5x squared plus 7y equals 3. So the first step is to choose a variable that you want to eliminate and the choice does not matter. You can choose to eliminate the x variable. You can also choose to eliminate the y variable. We're going to choose to eliminate the y variable because that is y to the first power in each of the equations. So notice that you have 2 times y in one of the equations and the other equation has 7 times y. We're going to try to find what is the first multiple that 2y and 7y have in common. Well, it must be 14y and the other equation will be negative 14y. That way, when we add the two equations together, you'll have 14y, subtract 14y, that will give you zero, and the variable y is eliminated. So if we want the first equation to be negative 14y, we can multiply the first equation by negative 7. So we need to multiply both sides of the equation by negative 7. 3x squared times negative 7 will give us negative 21x squared. 2y times negative 7 will give us negative 14y. 26 times negative 7 will give us negative 182. And now I'll take the second equation. If you want to get positive 14y, you need to multiply this second equation by 2. So multiply both sides of the equation by 2. So 5x squared times 2 will give us 10x squared. 7y times 2 will give us positive 14y. 3 times 2 will give us 6. And now we add the resulting equations after the multiplications. So we have negative 21x squared plus 10x squared. That's negative 11x squared because those are like terms. So we can add them vertically. Negative 14y plus 14y. That cancels out because they're like terms and that's 0y. That's why we chose to eliminate the y and we multiply the first equation by negative 7 and the second equation by positive 2 because we want to eliminate the y variable and the right side of the equation negative 182 plus 6 will give us negative 176. So now we solve this resulting equation that only has the variable x involved. Negative 11 x squared equals negative 176. Divide both sides of the equation by negative 11. You have x squared is equal to negative 176 divided by negative 11 will be 16 and so x squared equals 16 and then if you solve for the variable x take the square root on both sides of the equation but remember the plus or minus because you're taking the square root to cancel out the square power on the variable. So x squared equals 16 will give us x is equal to plus or minus 4. So we get x equals 4 or x equals negative 4. So now that we have the value for x, x is equal to 4 or x equals negative 4, now we're going to back substitute x equals 4 and x equals negative 4 into either of the original equations to find out the y coordinates instead of the intersection points. So I'm going to choose the first equation, 3x squared plus 2y equals 26. I'm going to plug in x equals 4 and then I'm going to get the answer for the y value. And then I'm going to plug in x equals negative 4 to find out what is that y value for x equals negative 4. So if x equals negative 4, 3x squared plus 2y equals 26 will become 3 times x, that's 3 times negative 4 in parentheses, squared, plus 2 times y is equal to 26. 3 times negative 4, if the negative 4 is in parentheses squared, that will give you positive 16 times 3, that's 48. So you have 48 plus 2 times y is equal to 26. So subtract 48 to the right side of the equation, you'll have 2y is equal to negative 22. 
And if you divide both sides of the equation by 2, you'll have y is equal to negative 11. So whenever x equals negative 4, the y coordinate must be negative 11. So you have one intersection point at negative 4 comma negative 11. Now if x equals 4, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to substitute x equals 4 into the equation 3x squared plus 2y equals 26. And we're going to find out what is the corresponding y coordinate or y value. So if x equals 4, we'll have 3 times 4 squared plus 2y is equal to 26. 3 times 4 squared will give you 48 again. So you have 48 plus 2 times y is equal to 26. Subtract 48 to the right side of the equation. So 2y is equal to negative 22. And if you divide both sides of the equation by 2, you have y is equal to negative 11. So whenever x is equal to 4, the y coordinate must also be negative 11. So the other intersection point will be 4 comma negative 11. So the equations, 3x squared plus 2y equals 26, and 5x squared plus 7y equals 3, these two parabolas will actually intersect at two different points. They'll intersect at negative 4, negative 11, and also positive 4, comma, negative 11. So let's try another one. Number 2, this time the system of nonlinear equations is x squared subtract y squared equals 1, and 2x squared subtract y squared is equal to x plus 3. So notice that you have two nonlinear equations. Both of the variables are raised to powers that are not 1. So these are two nonlinear equations that we're trying to solve for the system of nonlinear equations. And we're going to use the elimination method again. So let's take the equations and make sure that all the variables are on the same side of the equation and the constant terms are on the other side of the equation, away from the variables. So x squared minus y squared equals 1. That's perfectly fine. But 2x squared subtract y squared equals x plus 3. Let's subtract x to the left side of the equation. So you have 2x squared subtract x subtract y squared and the right side of the equation will just stay 3. So now remember how the elimination method works. We're going to choose a variable to eliminate and the choice does not matter. However, you want to choose so that you only have one variable remaining. So let's choose to eliminate the y because we have x squared in both equations, but we only have an x in one of the equations and not the other equation. And we have y squared in both of the equations. So let's eliminate the variable y. That way we only have the variable x remaining. So when you look at the equations, you notice you have negative y squared in the first equation and you also have negative y squared in the second equation. So let's take one of the equations and multiply by negative one. And the other equation will be multiplied by positive one and it will just stay the same. So x squared minus y squared equals one. Let's just multiply by one so that will stay the same. So x squared minus y squared equals 1 is the first equation. However, the second equation will multiply by negative 1. So 2x squared times negative 1 will give us negative 2x squared. Negative x times negative 1 will give us positive x. Negative y squared times negative 1 will give us positive y squared. And then 3 times negative 1 will give us negative 3. So the second equation will be negative 2x squared plus x plus y squared equals negative 3. Now if you add the two results in equations, notice that the y squared terms will cancel out. You have negative y squared plus y squared, that's 0 y squared, so the variable y has been eliminated. However, you have x squared terms that can be combined. You have x squared, subtract 2x squared, that's negative 1x squared, plus 1x is equal to the right side of the equation. 1 subtract 3 will give you negative 2. So now you need to solve this result in equation for the variable x. Notice that you have a quadratic equation, so we'll move all the terms to one side of the equation so that the equation is equal to 0. So let's move all the terms to the right side of the equation. So that way it's positive x squared. So add x squared to the right side of the equation. So you have x squared. Subtract x to the right side of the equation. So you have negative x. And negative 2 is already on the right side of the equation, so just stays negative 2. And the other side of the equation will be 0. So x squared subtract x minus 2 is equal to 0. And so now we can try solving this equation by factoring. Try to find two numbers that multiply to negative 2, and also the same two numbers need to add to negative 1. So the numbers that work are negative 2 and positive 1. Negative 2 times positive 1 will give you negative 2, and negative 2 plus 1 will give you negative 1, which is the middle term. So the factors are x attract 2 in parentheses, and the other factor is x plus 1 in parentheses. And the product is equal to 0, so that means that at least one of the factors must be 0. So x minus 2 is equal to 0, or x plus 1 is equal to 0. So that means x is equal to 2, or x is equal to negative 1. So that gives us the x coordinates for the intersection points, but we also need to find out the y coordinates for the intersection points. So if x is equal to 2 and x is equal to negative 1, let's substitute into either of the original equations. We're going to back substitute x equals negative 1 and x equals 2 into either of the original equations in the system of nonlinear equations to find out the y coordinates of the intersection points. I'm going to choose the first equation again. x squared minus y squared is equal to 1. I'm going to substitute x equals negative 1 and x equals 2 into that equation to find out what is the corresponding y coordinate coordinate for the intersection points. So if x equals negative 1, that means the equation x squared minus y squared equals 1 will become negative 1 squared in parentheses, subtract y squared is equal to 1, negative 1 squared in parentheses is positive 1, so 1 subtract y squared equals 1, that gives you y squared is equal to 0, and then y must be 0. So if x equals negative 1, the y value must be 0. So one of the intersection points is negative 1 comma 0. And now to find out the other intersection points, if you let x equals 2 in the same equation, x squared minus y squared equals 1, you have x squared minus y squared equals 1 becomes 2 squared, subtract y squared equals 1, 
2 squared is equal to 4, so you have 4 subtract y squared equals 1. And if you subtract 4 to the right side of the equation, you have negative y squared is equal to negative 3. Divide both sides of the equation by negative 1 to get y squared by itself. And y squared is equal to positive 3. And now take the square root on both sides of the equation. And remember, the plus or minus, because you're taking the square root to cancel out a square power on the y variable. So y is equal to plus or minus the right side of the equation, square root of 3. So y is equal to plus or minus the square root of 3. So that means that y can be square root of 3 or y is equal to negative square root of 3 whenever the x coordinate is equal to 2. So you have two more intersection points. If x is equal to 2, the y coordinate can be square root of 3. So you have 2 comma square root of 3 as an intersection point. And if x is equal to 2, the y coordinate can be negative square root of 3. So you have 2 comma negative square root of 3 is also an intersection point. So the graph of these two different equations will have three intersection points, negative 1 comma 0, 2 comma square root 3, and also 2 comma negative square root 3. So the two graphs will intersect at these three different points. So now that we talked about how to use the substitution and elimination methods, let's talk about how to use the graphical method. The solution to a system of nonlinear equations can sometimes be found by graphing both of the equations in the same rectangular coordinate system. And the coordinates of the intersection points will actually give you the solution to the system of nonlinear equations. So in the graphical method, we're going to use a graphing calculator to solve the system of nonlinear equations. And in the next example, we're going to show the steps to actually find the intersection points for a pair of nonlinear curves. So in example three, the graphical method, solve the following system of nonlinear equations in two variables using a graphing calculator to find the points of intersection. So notice that you have the system of equations, y equals e to the x plus e to the negative x, and also you have the other equation that's x squared plus y subtract 5 equals 0. So both of these equations are nonlinear equations. The first equation involves exponential functions, e to the x and also e to the negative x, whereas the second equation is actually a quadratic equation because if you solve for y, you actually have y is equal to 5 subtract x squared. And so we know that graph will actually be a parabola that opens down. So the first step that you actually need to do when you actually solve a system of nonlinear equations using the graphical method is that you need to have both of the equations solve for y first. So the first equation is already solved for y. The y is by itself on the left side of the equation. So y equals e to the x plus e to the negative x. However, if you get y by itself for the second equation, you get y is equal to 5 subtract x squared. So now we actually can enter these equations into the graphing calculator under the y equals menu. So go to y equals. The first equation was e to the x exponent and then plus e to the negative x exponent. Whereas y2, the other equation, was y is equal to 5 subtract x squared. Now we need to set up our graphing window so that we actually can see both intersection points on the graphing window. So now go to window. Notice that the window is already in standard form. The x min, x max goes from negative 10 to 10. Count the tick marks by 1. The y values go from negative 10 to 10 for the y min and the y max, and the y tick marks will also count by 1. Let's set up our window to be as follows. The x min will be negative 5. The x max will be positive 5. We'll keep the tick marks counting by 1s for the x-axis. The y min will be negative 5, and we'll keep the y max as positive 10, and the y tick marks will count by 1s. Once you have the graphing window set up, now hit graph to actually find out what does the graph of each function look like. So the first graph was y equals e to the x plus e to the negative x, whereas the second curve was y equals 5 subtract x squared. So we know that one graph is a parabola that opens down. However, the other equation or the other curve as y equals e to the x plus e to the negative x, this is not a parabola, but it actually looks like a u-shaped graph. So we're going to find out what are the intersection points for both of these curves. So you have two intersection points to find. You have to actually find them separately. So if you want to find one of the intersection points, you need to be on the graph screen and now hit second trace or second calc. You want to use option number five for intersection. And now it's going to ask you a couple questions. What is your first curve? Well, our first curve was y1 was e to the x plus e to the negative x. So that's correct. So hit enter. y2 was the curve y was equal to five subtract x squared. And so the second curve is the parabola that opens down. That's correct. So hit enter. And now it wants us to guess. You need to guess an x value that's closer to one of the two intersection points. So if you want to find the intersection point that's on the left, you need to choose an x value that's close to that intersection point. If you want to find the intersection point that's on the right, if you want to find the intersection point that's on the right, you need to choose an x value that's closer to that value. Or you can use the arrow keys to scroll left and right to actually get closer to one of the two intersection points. So let's find the intersection point that's on the left. So scroll to the left. The guess will actually be closer to the left intersection point. So now hit enter. And so the intersection point that's on the left is where the x value is negative 1.189 if you round to three decimal places, and the y value is 3.587 when you round to three decimal places. And it actually has the intersection point located at the cursor that's blinking. So now let's find the other intersection point the same way. So go to second, trace, which is the calc button. Use option number five for intersection. First curve was still the same. e to the x plus e to negative x was equal to y, so that's correct. Second curve was y equals five subtract x squared. That's correct. And now the guess, again, use your arrow keys. So you can scroll to the right until you get closer and closer to the intersection point. 
and so it looks like it's approximately 1.189 for the x coordinate, and the y coordinate is approximately 3.587 when you rounded three decimal places for the x and the y coordinate. So those are the two intersection points that we found, and so those are the two solutions for the system of nonlinear equations. So the system of nonlinear equations has two solutions. If you rounded three decimal places, one of the solutions is negative 1.189 for the x coordinate, and the y coordinate was 3.587, whereas the other intersection point was x value 1.189, and the y value was 3. 587. So these are the two solutions to the system of nonlinear equations, y equals e to the x plus e to the negative x, and also x squared plus y subtract 5 equals 0. So this finishes our video on systems of nonlinear equations. We talked about how to solve a system of nonlinear equations using the substitution method, how to solve a system of nonlinear equations using the elimination method, and also how to solve a system of nonlinear equations using the graphical method. If you have any questions about any of the examples in this video, please let me know. Or if you have any questions while you work on the homework for this section, please let me know this as well. And I'll see you at the next video when we talk about parabolas.